Hi everyone, this is David Wicks, uh, your instructor for EDTC 6431 Learning with Technology. And in this screencast, we want to talk about the syllabus. So let's go ahead and find it. Uh, it would be under Course Information. And then you would click on the link that says uh, Syllabus. And I've already done that, so let me jump to the syllabus here. And I just want to po point out some some things within the syllabus. Uh, here you can see my information. Uh, please feel free to contact me either by email or by phone um, if you have uh, questions about the course. And um, please uh, use those, uh, either the email or the phone, for questions that are uh, more of a personal nature where um, the question you're asking really only applies to you. If you think others may benefit from um, why you're contacting me, please post that on our discussion board in our course. Uh, I am happy to meet with you in person if you would find that to be beneficial. Uh, we're using Blackboard 9.1 in this course. Other than having to go to a different login, you shouldn't notice a lot of differences uh, from the student end. Uh, the differences are primarily on the instructor end. Uh, we do this so that we can uh, make sure that the uh, software is working properly before the whole university switches to it. So I appreciate uh, and thank you for your um, work in, uh, in this course that's helping us to know whether the, this, this tool is ready to be deployed to the entire campus. Um, this course, uh, we're looking to see how we can uh, promote effective learning uh, with educational technology. And it's um, uh, sometimes uh, technology is just added to the equation uh, of a classroom without clearly thinking through uh, how it can be used as a tool to solve problems. And so we're um, looking for that in, in any way we can find it. So if it's a tool that makes us more efficient or if it's something that supports the actual learning, um, those are the types of tools that we want to look at uh, when we're looking at instructional technology tools. Uh, we will be using the ISTE standards. We'll be looking at each of those, and those are national educational technology standards. Uh, the state of Washington follows these, so um, you will uh, possibly see these uh, maybe not listed quite this way from the state of Washington, but they have incorporated them. They are one of the states that uses them. Um, so you can see our goals here listed for the, the course. We do want to um, s learn about these uh, educational technology standards. We want to have some uh, hands-on experience with uh, various educational technology tools and um, we're going to also be working with our uh, um, blogs, your B portfolios, and, and posting uh, content in those. Uh, make sure uh, if you're having any technology problems that you look at this link and use recommended technology for the course. Uh, the content is listed here. It's also listed in the uh, schedule document, um, but it follows both the ISTE standards as well as the text that we'll be reading. And um, uh, I do want you to see that uh, just this is sometimes a question people ask, but um, these are the graduate program outcome dom domains that were listed on the first page. So I'm just trying to align uh, with those um, outcome domains, uh, the topics in the course. In terms of our activities, uh, the first activity listed here is the resource sharing activity. And so after you've read um, uh, the module readings for a course, you're going to then um, look to share a resource. So as you're going through the readings, you're finding something that you're interested in that you would want to uh, maybe um, research a little further and share with the class. And so you'll either use the library uh, database um, uh, for journal articles or uh, you'll conduct your own web-based search 
uh, to either find uh, again an article or it could be a website some kind of a uh, technology tool um, that that you could be sharing uh, with the class uh, so once you've found something that you think is related to the topics covered in the in the module then um, you'll summarize it for the rest of us so uh, we're not all going to have time to read all of these articles but if you can give us a paragraph where you're summarizing an article you read or summarizing a tool that you've explored then um, that will give the rest of us an opportunity to decide whether or not we want to invest more time looking into that uh, article or that tool and one of the key things that you'll do is make sure that you post a direct link to the article or the website of the tool uh, in your post so that uh, others um, can click on it and go directly to it that they don't have any um, they don't have to search for it themselves and um, then uh, to share this with the rest of the class you're going to make a new post in the course blog and create a new entry so I'm going to just jump uh, back to our course quickly here you can see here's the course blog and journal let me click on that link this is where you'll find the blog where you're going to be sharing uh, your resources it's also where later on you'll be uh, sharing your um, learning tool exploration uh, journal uh, findings so this is actually uh, something I'll talk about in a little bit so let's go to the course blog so I just click view and hopefully well you can see examples here so thank you to um, Megan uh, for having the example that's here at the top but she's um, shared uh, something uh, about um, iPads in, in the classroom here and she uh, gives us some information um, just to, to yours uh, appreciate what she's done in terms of sharing this uh, I'm not expecting them to be um, very long uh, just something that will give us a quick summary and then a, a link we can click on if we want to get more information so you would go down this list of everything that's posted once your uh, colleagues have, have shared and be able to quickly read a paragraph and decide whether or not it's something that you want to click on so that's how it will work and what you're going to do to share your own is over here where it says add new entry you'll click that link and uh, let's say that you're um, uh, going to share about a smart board so you uh, put in the title um, you want to be uh, uh, creative with the title or at least be uh, make it so that it's it's clear to others what what the topic is so maybe um, I'm, I'm going to say smart boards in uh, high school math okay and I click continue and then here is where I would uh, either paste and notice there's a little paste from word button up here so if you put it in word you'd copy it and work from word and just click that paste from word there that should get rid of some of the formatting uh, issues you may have in word but uh, I'm just gonna put text goes here you can type your article in here just realize you're on the web so if something would happen where your your browser would crash or your computer shuts down unexpectedly you wouldn't have your work saved that's why the uh, paragraph in, in Word lets you work where you're comfortable um, editing and uh, spell checking and everything is, is uh, uh, familiar to you and then pasting it here you'll also want to include this the link so either at the top bottom of your article you would have the link so I'm just going to put in here just a HTTP uh, SPU dot well let's put smart board and not even sure if that's the actual link to the company but uh, we'll put that as the link here and notice that it isn't um, an active link now we don't see the highlighting we aren't able to just click on it so what you'll want to do is select it 
and then click the link button and actually put the URL in here. Okay, and insert that. And so you've got it. Now you can see it's an active link that when this is published, it can be clicked on. Okay, uh, you'll want to make sure you test that. Um, and then when you're finished with it, uh, down at the bottom, there's a save and exit. You would click that. And now you can see it here. Okay, so that's all there is to posting it. If uh, one of your uh, colleagues shares something that's uh, valuable, you can uh, um, let them know by just clicking on the comments. So you can click on viewer comments and you can say something to them, uh, you know, thanks. And it, to even take this further and to make it better, you could say, I'm actually using that technology in my class and it works, or here's the issues I'm having. Um, th those would be helpful comments for people. And then just clicking post would allow others to know that when they scroll down, they see um, that it, whether or not there are viewer comments from people. Okay. So that's um, how the uh, resource sharing would work. And when you're finished with that, um, in the module, you'll find a way to self-assess. Um, you'll find a link to where you can self-assess that. And so let me just um, show you in the syllabus. Uh, you don't have to respond to other people. That's not a part of this uh, in terms of the assessment. Uh, but it's it's encouraged um, in order to um, uh, help each other uh, um, construct knowledge about the topics that we have. Uh, you all are, are using some of these technologies and you can give some insight on um, your experience uh, working with it in your uh, learning environment. And so um, after you've posted it, then you'll go back to the module folder and there you'll find a link to a self-assessment. And in that self-assessment, um, you will look at these uh, five uh, criteria and um, answer yes, no questions of whether or not you, you address them. So, the module needs to, or the uh, resource that you share needs to be on topic. It needs to be related to the, the module topic. And, and to say that in your post, how it relates, is an important thing. Um, the resource uh, provides additional information that extends, uh, contrasts, ideas presented. So you should share something about how this extends. So in the module topic we talked about, or in the module we addressed um, creativity, and I'm sharing a resource called Glogster where it's allowing my students to use the computer to create posters, and uh, um, they're um, expressing their creativity uh, through this, um, this tool. Uh, so something along those lines. And then I provided a, a concise summary of my resource that would help others decide if they should read it. So uh, this should be uh, fairly self-evident that if you've included a paragraph that um, highlights the pros and cons uh, of it or just gives detail, a little bit of detail of that will help people decide, uh, then you give yourself full credit for that. I provided a working link to my resource, so after you um, share it, you will want to come back and click on this link to make sure it actually takes them somewhere, to make sure you didn't make a mistake like I've um, made a number of times when I've shared links, so always important to test those. And then the last is I posted my summary to the to the course blog by the specific deadline. So in the course schedule, it will tell you when you need to have that resource posted, and you should have it have it done by that time. If you didn't, um, then you then you give your you answer the question no, which would mean you'd lose those points. Um, it will be important. The first week uh, is always a, a little difficult because people are 
uh, just trying to figure out what's going on in the course. But after that, um, it's really important that you uh, stay on task with the deadlines so that other people can um, review things in a timely manner. And those, uh, you know, being able to uh, go through and look at what everybody's posted um, after the deadline, uh, they'll be able to have seen everything that was said um, uh, rather than three people post by the deadline and so when they go the next day to look to see what was shared there's only three of them there and the remaining 15 or so uh, come throughout the term so it, it's critical to, to to stay on task it's very helpful for others so uh, let's move on to the next uh, I think that should answer your questions with that uh, resource sharing uh, in terms of the uh, online discussion assessment we're using a tool talk wheel uh, in our um, uh, for our discussions and this is something that we're piloting and we're seeing how it works so I appreciate any feedback you have on it um, in it you want to make sure um, that you follow or that you've reviewed these uh, criteria um, for it and make sure you understand what you're supposed to do. So let's go over the criteria here uh, quickly and, and make sure you have this down. Um, make sure you review the schedule uh, to know when you should post. Look at that schedule document and basically it's a Thursday Sunday. Uh, and so on Thursday you just need to have one post. And think of your post like a, a classroom discussion. Uh, when we have a classroom discussion and you raise your hand to say something, you don't give us an essay where you say, on this topic, here's my point, on this topic, here's my point, on the third topic, here's my point. You just share um, about one thing. And so that's what I'm really asking you to do on Thursday. Uh, look at the guiding questions, look at the module, um, think about the readings, uh, think about the resources that have been shared, and address one thing. And in your uh, post, um, it's, it should just be about a paragraph long, and you're um, letting us know about something, you're demonstrating that you've done the reading, you're demonstrating that you've ex you've gone beyond the reading, you, you've thought about other resources that relate to it, uh, and um, then uh, you possibly have asked a question in it. Um, those are all uh, good things to do in your post. And so by Thursday, you should do that. Again, first week, if you were still trying to figure out what was going on, just get it done as soon as you can. Uh, but after the first week, everybody should be on, on board and we should be rolling with having our posts on time so that um, others can um, be reading your posts uh, when they go look after deadlines. Uh, so let's go through the criteria. The first one is to contribute at least one post demonstrating familiarity with the content of the assigned reading. So in this one what you're wanting to do is um, share something that came from the assigned reading related to uh, um, the module topic uh, and um, uh, it, it can come up in any, any way. You can be talking about a tool and then you could reference uh, something from the, the, one of the readings, uh, but you'll want to demonstrate that you've done the reading here. So um, you'd want to reference uh, at the bottom of your post and you'd want to, uh, we're not formal APA citation isn't necessarily what we're looking for, but uh, just in general, if you can um, let us know this is what uh, Perez said or Smith said or whatever, and then give us a, um, a, a you know a brief uh, a citation of where uh, it came from. That's that's very helpful. Um, on the second one, you want to contribute at least one post related to the content of the module. Um, uh, 
relating the content of the module to a situation or information outside of the assigned reading. So this could be where you're um, following up on, on somebody else's post. And so possibly someone else has shared a resource and you either have experience with it or you're thinking about using it with your students. So um, in this case, uh, you might be saying, um, I've used that tool and here's my experience, or I'm thinking about using that tool and here are my concerns, or here is how I think it could work well in my teaching. Um, so those, that's what you would be looking for. So if you look at getting all the points there, your post includes descriptions of world, real world examples or references to other resources. Um, beyond. So this is where you could um, also respond to somebody else's post and say, um, oh, you're interested in Prezi? I found a great website where they um, have tutorials on how to, how to use Prezi. Uh, so that's, that's the second criteria. And uh, the third, um, you engaged uh, with or extended ideas presented by others. Well, the what I just mentioned would would meet this criterion. So if you're actually responding to someone else's post and um, giving additional resources for where people could find help with what was brought up, then you would be extending it. You could also be saying, um, let's say somebody posts something about Prezi and talks about how it should replace, and you may not even know what Prezi is, but it's a presentation tool, uh, Prezi.com. But let's say that somebody posts something about Prezi that says this, people shouldn't use PowerPoint anymore, they should only use Prezi. Well, let's say you've used Prezi and you've come to a different conclusion. And so maybe you're saying, well, Prezi works well when I do these types of presentations, but I still like PowerPoint uh, for this other type of presentation. So that, that would be a way to um, uh, uh, engage them and, and disagree uh, and provide um, uh, evidence uh, uh, to the other side of, of why, of other things people might want to consider there. The fourth criterion is that you've met deadlines. Um, so again, this is this is a big one. After the first week, if you can make sure you hit the Thursday Sunday, um, that's fantastic. And then, really, um, you know, if you once you've hit the Thursday one, if you can check Friday, see if there's anything you should follow up with. Check Saturday, check Sunday, and, and you're not always going to have time to do all those. But if we can get a little bit going on in between Thursday and, and Sunday to where we kind of have a continuous conversation taking place, uh, then I think you'll we'll, we'll benefit more from these discussions than if everybody posts midnight Thursday and everybody posts midnight Sunday. Um, that's not going to work as well. Uh, fifth and sixth ones has read all the posts for the module. so. After um, the Sunday deadline, so sometime probably Monday, if you just scan through, if you go into Talkwill and just scan through all the posts that have been made, if you still need to follow up with one and maybe give somebody some information, great. But if you just scan through and look, the, look, the, look them all over, um, then you've completed that task. And that's, again, a reason why people being on time is is helpful. I, I don't expect you to follow up or, or read posts that are made late. So if you're someone who posts late, um, you're probably not going to be part of the conversation uh, and you'll lose points on top of that. So uh, the final one is uh, follow appropriate netiquette. Um, this is, is uh, we We'll talk a lot about digital citizenship in this course, and it's just uh, extremely important for people to be civil uh, in online forums. So uh, it, it, we're encouraging you to critique ideas and to provide uh, evidence uh, of another a way to use a tool or um, that there are maybe some downsides to a particular tool or, or te uh, teaching technolo or technology 
excuse me, um, technology teaching method, technology enhanced teaching method, technology uh, or a technology enhanced teaching method. Um, but you can say it in a way where uh, it doesn't sound like you're attacking the person. And I think that's all we need to say about that one. A few more notes on this. Uh, there is a three post minimum. So uh, we talked about uh, an initial post Thursday and a final post on Sunday. Somewhere in between that, there could be two posts Thursday. There could be a Thursday, Saturday, Sunday post. Um, but out of it, you should end up for this whole uh, list to meet your um, uh, to meet all of the criteria uh, and to get all your points. Uh, you would want to have a, a minimum of three posts. If you don't make three posts, if you only posted once on Sunday or you just missed the discussion, you didn't get anything posted by the deadline then you won't take the self-assessment. You just leave it blank, and that would just indicate that you would receive a zero for that that week. So please make sure that you um, take this seriously. Uh, a big piece of online learning is um, the collaboration. And so if you're working together to construct knowledge, that's going to be a huge piece to this. Um, so uh, the other things were a couple other things we're primarily interested in the content and ideas um, so uh, a typo here or there isn't a huge thing but um, if it's unreadable uh, then it's it will in, un, uh, interfere with people's ability to quickly um, move through these and decide whether they need to interact with something. So please do take your time to, to proofread before you contribute. Um, and this is another reason why it's probably good to, to compose in a word processor and then copy and paste. Um, and then the last here is, is it, it related to the deadlines again. If you can post ahead of the time on the deadlines, that's going to help everyone. That'll give people more time to read what's what's going on. So if you can uh, log in um, three or more times a week and check it and contribute where you think it's where you have something to share, that would be fantastic. Okay, so let's look at the third one, uh, the learning to ex tool exploration. So you're going to find after um, people have shared some of these resources that there are some tools that you're interested in and rather than me um, coming into this class and saying here are the five tools we're going to learn about uh, I want you to find tools that you're interested in so during modules two four six and eight you're going to remember uh, for example in module two uh, in either module one or two someone's going to share a tool that you're interested in and so um, uh, let's say that it is uh, um, uh, uh, something like Glogster so Glogster is a tool that you could use to make posters um, online posters and so somebody's mentioned that as a resource for creativity and so you're you're going to go and see if you can find a tutorial on Glogster, find some uh, videos that explain how it can be used, and if it asks you, and, and then you'll actually go to Glogster. If it's having you set up an account, you'll set up an account, and for one or two hours you'll um, try it out, see what it's like, and then you'll um, answer these questions. So what what is it that you find enjoyable about the tool? How is it challenging? Is there anything that surprised you? Um, uh, can you use it for your own learning? How might you use it with your students? And what questions do you have after your exploration about the tool? And so you'll then compose um, a, a, a several paragraphs um, where you've addressed these questions and um, if you've made something you'll post a link to what what you've made or um, uh, add it as an attachment 
um, but you're going to set that up and, and share it with us. And this is also something you could share in your own B portfolio, um, the experience you have here. But I'm only asking you to put it in your journal. The journal is, again, back um, under uh, blog and journal, this learning tool exploration journal. I can't, I won't click there now because this is... Uh, private journal your post whatever you share there is just between you and me um, and then if you decide you want to share it with others you could put it in your B portfolio as well okay um, and then I'm going to grade those and that's a more of a subjective grading um, you know really if you've done what's outlined here um, the, the, you'll get full credit for it and I'll give you some feedback on that and then the um, the final assessment in this uh, is the the uh, course e-text reading and, and reflection assignment I'm going to actually cover this one in a separate um, screencast um, so we get started on this during the second week um, I can see through some of what's been going on in the course that people are already have their book and have already started. So um, I'll make a separate screencast explaining this project um, that'll follow this, this screencast as well. I'll post that and let you know about it. The grades are uh, straight points, so um, we'll just, when you're finished in the course, if you have, if we end up with 320 points and you have 300, it'll be 300 out of 320, whatever percentage um, that is. Uh, it will be the grade you get um, based on um, these values. Uh, the text and software, so we are going to use an e-reader. You don't have to have a Kindle, a physical Kindle uh, hardware device. Uh, but you will either need to use your computer, your Mac or your PC, your iPhone, your iPad, or if you have an Android phone, there's other versions too. I think there's a Blackberry and whatnot, but um, you'll purchase the book once and then you should be able to play it on multiple devices. So I personally uh, read the book on, I have a Kindle, uh, I read it on my MacBook Pro, I also have an iPad and an Android phone. And so pretty much wherever I'm at, I have one of those devices. And if I find myself with time, then I can uh, look at uh, what I'm reading and, and make some notes. Um, there'll be some journal articles in the Blackboard modules, some web links. And then there's, of course, uh, WordPress as the software we're using with your B portfolios. Uh, speaking of the B portfolio, if you've not created one before, um, we can get you up and running on that. Uh, I wanted the uh, links to those this week, uh, but if you don't have one yet created, um, let me know if you need some help getting that done so we can get you set up and get you rolling with that. Uh, since I am an instructional technologist, I'm working with faculty on their use of Blackboard, so I may be showing them things in our course. Um, I don't ever show them things like your grades or um, try to avoid any, any kind of private content, but just know that I do share things uh, that I uh, in my course with other faculty. If you have any disabilities that will impact or you believe will impact your performance in this class, please let me know so we can make uh, the appropriate uh, accommodations for you. Um, I think that's all for now. I think that uh, you should have what you need to get started. Um, uh, and if you still have questions about this, uh, please go to our discussion board. So have a good day. Take care. Bye.